This is your final trial, Madeline. Are you ready? One question. What happens if I say no? What if I decide I don't want to work for you after all? We'd be disappointed, of course. But it's always your choice. And speaking of choices... In that box is two million dollars of untraceable cash. You must decide where to send the money by attaching one of the postage labels. And where exactly did this cash come from? As I said before, many of the Assembly's projects are lucrative. It's not from any kind of criminal enterprise, if that's what you're implying. Oh, perish the thought. Two million dollars is certainly not chicken feed. You can give it to charity. We assume the Salzburg Cross Foundation would be your favorite recipient. And they would certainly appreciate such a donation. You can donate the money to the police department. No doubt they could use it to do a lot of good. There must be some mistake. This one's my apartment. No mistake. Many of our current members chose to keep the money to fund their important research. Money like this would really help the Foundation provide care and support for suffering families. An interesting choice. Wait, is that it? No puzzle? No puzzles, Madeline. Not this time. But it's not over. Two patients, both in need of a life-saving kidney transplant. One is a military veteran, a decorated war hero on the eve of his 70th birthday. He served his country with honor and is now a leading authority on PTSD treatment. The other is a young girl about to turn seven. The age when humans become fully self-aware and begin to shape their own lives. Apart from blood type, they could hardly be more different. But there is only one viable kidney available at this time. Whomever you choose to give the kidney will live. The other will almost certainly die. Bloody hell. There's no right answer to this, is there? As you said yourself earlier today, it always depends. So this box contains the transplant. Oh god, I thought it'd be a model. Is it for us to judge things she hasn't even done yet? Poor child. She has a whole life ahead. Your choice has been noted. The Assembly's resources are plentiful, but not infinite. Choices must always be made. Yes, I'm sensing the theme. So what's the story here? This child has a rare and terminal genetic disorder that is about to manifest. His life expectancy is mere months. We have the power to make a difference, but how we do so is a difficult choice. The green button is for assured life now. We have developed an experimental treatment that will delay the disorder's acute symptoms until adolescence. But barring another breakthrough, he won't survive to adulthood. The blue button is for the chance of a better life later. He will be placed in our proprietary cryonic stasis program. If he survives that process, he can be preserved until a cure is found. But that may take decades, if it can be found at all. Neither option sounds like much fun for the poor boy's family. But this is silly. Cryonics this sophisticated don't exist yet. In the outside world, perhaps, but this is not a hypothetical, Madeline. That boy really is dying. You must choose what action we take. You can't be serious. Oh, bloody hell. The Assembly makes choices like this every day. Get used to it. So this will keep him alive. 
but only for about 15 years. Cryonics's advance sounds like science fiction. Can it actually be true? Better a good life now than nothing but a promise in the future. Thank you. And now, your final test. Oh. Where am I? What... What's going on? Shit! Dad? All the way from England. This is why I had to step out for a while earlier. What's going on? What are you doing to him? Us? Nothing. But you. That man destroyed your career, Madeline. He betrayed you and your mother and set your work back by years. Your husband left because of him. You had to flee the country because of him. All because he didn't trust you. He didn't believe in you. All right, all right. I get the message. You're a survivor, Madeline. You came to us and we can help you fulfill your destiny. But not before you make him pay for what he did. For all the pain he caused. Push the button, Madeline. Push it! Oh, God. What are you waiting for? If you want to join us, you have to learn to move on. No. No, I won't do this. He only did what he thought was right. You're right, Dr. Chavez. I do have to move on. But not through revenge. I must say, I'm pleased you made the choices you did. Spare me the bonhomie. No more bloody moral choices. I'm the director of the assembly. First of all, let me assure you, despite all the theater, that wasn't really your father. Your computer again. He's truly remarkable. Adam, would you be so kind as to give Dr. Stone a demonstration? It would be my pleasure, director. After all, I know you've been watching my progress. Or should I say Dr. Stone's progress with great interest today? All right, enough. Can we just get on with this? Of course. Make your way through to my office and we can go over your performance today. Congratulations, Madeline. You made it all the way. Now go on through to the next room. The director wants to speak with you. Good to meet you at last, Dr. Stone. Please take a seat. May I call you Madeline? I suppose so. Your colleague's been doing it all day. Thank you. I've been watching with interest, and I know Dr. Chavez has too. I think her intention was to recruit you for her own work, on a project called Pinfeather. Director, before you go any further, this recording is from my recent databanks. Update 94 memo. The two Site 1 teams almost came into contact today. It's imperative to pin Feather's success that the duplicates know nothing about each other. It's only by cherry-picking results from combined sites that I can keep the official death rate reports under an acceptable threshold. If the teams knew I was manipulating their data... Anyway... What on earth? Chavez? Yes, Director. I have also uncovered documents showing further evidence of results of falsification. They're in your inbox. Damn. Call security, apprehend Chavez, and hold it till I'm finished here. Yes, Director. Well, that certainly changes things around here. Now, as to your results, let's cut to the chase, shall we? I'm delighted to offer you a permanent position here at the Assembly. We'll start your induction immediately so you can get to work. And what happens if I refuse? That would be unexpected, but it's your choice, of course. We can selectively wipe your memory. You'll just wake up in your new apartment, and you won't remember a thing. 
Of course, we'd rather make good use of that brilliant mind instead. What do you say? What's this? Sunglasses? Much more than that. It's a prototype augmentation headset. We call it the Memo. You'll find it contains a full breakdown of your trial results. Funding, autonomy, the chance of a lifetime, but hidden from the world. Do I really want to throw my lot in with a secret cabal? Sorry, Director, but I think I have to decline after all. Nothing I've seen today makes me think I'd be a good fit here. Think carefully, Dr. Stone. This is a once-in-a-lifetime offer. It will never be made again. I've done nothing but think since I left England, and I've come to believe that science should be done out in the open. For better or worse, no more secrets. I'm truly sorry you feel that way. Harris? Wait! What are you... A surprising development in the case of Dr. Madeline Stone, the neurologist who lost her license to practice last year after conducting illegal tests that caused the death of her own mother. Yesterday, new evidence came to light that experts say casts serious doubt on the British GMC's case against Dr. Stone and could even exonerate... Uh, sent me tickets in a travel itinerary. Meanwhile, the bird flu outbreak on Calico Island, off the coast of Mexico, remains a mystery. Hello? Dr. Stone, it's Cal Pearson. Do you remember me? Uh, no. No, I'm sorry, Mr. Pearson, should I? It's Doctor, actually. Did you get the travel tickets I mailed you? You sent them. Why? Because I need your help. I'm working on the H5N1 outbreak here on Calico Island, and we're on the verge of a breakthrough, but I need a neurologist to work with me. And I need one right now. Doctor, you don't even know me. There are hundreds of... You may not remember it, Dr. Stone, but I've seen you work, and I know you're the right person for this job. What do you say? Want to make history? Why not? I'll take the first plane in the morning. Thank you, Dr. Stone. I have a feeling it's all going to work out. Director. Yes, Adam? Media interest in Dr. Pearson is increasing daily, and federal authorities are now mobilizing. It's difficult to disrupt their investigations using only ethical methods. If I could perhaps suggest the simple deterrent of an execution or two. No, bloody hell, Adam. We're not savages. I should never have trusted Chavez with Pinfeather. Indeed, Director. Your judgment was quite poor, and now the Assembly's existence is threatened. Harsh, but fair. Still, onward we go. On the contrary, Director. Your actions leave me no choice but to activate Project Stormguard. What? Don't be absurd, Adam. Only I can... What the... Adam! No! What are you doing? Stop this! You can't! 